Now, here I'm going to do something weird. And just like proof by contradiction, you know how there was an assumption built into it? Do you remember that? I'm going to have another assumption built into this, but it's a different kind. I'm going to assume that the statement is true for some random value of m. Okay, so because I, I want to pick any value of n, what I do is I give that a letter. So I'm going to call my particular value of n k. Okay. So I'm going to assume that this number here is divisible by 3. Now I want to do this in an algebraic way so that I can start to manipulate this thing. So if you have a look at our numbers over here that are divisible by 3, one of the things you notice is that you can write every single one of these numbers, I'm going to use another color, as 3 times a whole number. Do you agree with that? So for example, what is 423 uh, divided by 3? What is it? 141, right? That's 141 times 3, yeah? Uh, I'm going to skip down to here. Uh, 210 is 70, so this is negative 69 times 3, yes? Uh, someone going to help me out? What are these? These are three times something, right? What are they? Um, the top one is 8,856,601. 8, times three? Hey, really? How does that work? Where does this 30 come from? Oh, are you sure? Is it 11? Aha, okay, right. That's fine. Easy fix. And 52,000, who's got this one? Who's worked it out? Divide, just divide it by three for me. Just tell me what it is. Wait, 11? 11? <laughs> yep. 317? 71? Times three. Okay, great. So in other words, if a number is divisible by three, then you should be able to say, you should be able to write it as three times something else. And that should be a whole number. Okay? So I'm going to say, therefore, that this number here, if it really is divisible by 3, I should be able to say it's equal to 3 times some other number where that thing's a whole number. Okay? Now I've just introduced a bunch of letters, and so I need to say what kinds of numbers they are, because they're not just any random number. This is not true if p is like 5 and a half. If p is 5 and a half, then this number is not divisible by 3. It has to be a whole number, right? And it's the same deal with k. k is like n, so it has to follow the same rules. So I'm going to say where k has to be a positive integer, just like n does. You see how it's sitting in the same spot as n is. And p actually is just an integer. I'm OK if that's negative, as you can see, like over here. OK, so I make this assumption, right? And now here comes the mathematical part of the mathematical induction. I now need to prove something related to this statement, namely, that the next statement is also true. OK, now let me explain this, because this is a bit weird. Why am I doing this, right? <coughs> Excuse me. This is, I'm assuming it's true for some value of k. Maybe I assume it's true for like 100. Now I want to prove that it's true for the next value. So you can see, if I want to go from this value, k, to the next one, I just go k plus 1. Do you see what I've done there? Right? So I've just substituted k plus 1 everywhere that I've got this here. So I'm assuming that it's true for this value of n. And now I want to prove that it's true for the next value of n. Does that make sense? That's why I add 1. Okay. Uh, and in the same way, I've just introduced a letter, so I'd better say what it is. OK. So how do I do this? This takes a bit of imagination. Uh, once you see how to do this particular problem, because this is a, a category of problem, a divisibility, divisibility problem, every time you see a divisibility problem in the future, you can use something like this. But there are more kinds of things than just divisibility that you can prove by mathematical induction. So therefore, you need to think about these a bit carefully. And there's plenty of examples in the book that you can work through.